We're back working on the 1979 Toyota Corolla. Last week we got the built engine installed that should be good to 500 wheel horsepower. But before we can start pushing power like that, we're gonna have to replace all of this jumbled mess of stock wiring with this. We're going full standalone engine management and here we've got the fuel tech, ECU, and wiring harness. Super excited to get this on the car, so let's get into it. Now that we figured out our oil pressure issue and decided we're not really gonna fix it properly quite yet, not till I have this engine out again, uh, I'm gonna have to pull this engine out, clean the oil pan up, and fix the oil pan. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rewire the entire engine and put a standalone engine management on it. This here is the FuelTech FT450. It is their baseline engine management system. This here is a dash and ECU all integrated into one. I've heard really good things about this setup and I'm excited to use it. I also went ahead and got the entire wiring harness. So this is an unterminated wiring harness. And I already went through and labeled pretty much everything that I'm going to need in order to get this thing wired into this engine bay. So we're gonna be using this entire wiring harness. It also comes with a fuel tech uh, hose so we can run the manifold pressure sensor that is built into the ECU and this should allow us to do everything we need to do to get this thing running on standalone engine management which is going to open up a ton of opportunities get rid of some outdated data and outdated things that are going on with the stock ECU and really this is going to be the key to allowing us to push the power levels we're desiring to push. I don't think I could ever get 500 horsepower out of a stock ECU and I didn't really want to go with one of the smaller or no name brand ECUs. I wanted to go with something that has good customer support, that's easy to use, pretty user friendly, and that's just got quality by its name and fuel tech was the obvious option for me. So now to start wiring this up and see if we can actually get this thing to our 500 horsepower goals. First thing first is we really got to figure out where we're going to put this ECU. Uh, I might end up putting it like on the steering column here. Uh, none of those gauges work. So I really don't need this dash and this whole dash thing comes out. So we might just pop this out and put it back there. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. I kind of like the fact that this hides a lot of the ugly, but also I'm not so sure I'm worried about hiding the ugly as much as I am about just getting this thing running with proper parts. So I'm gonna take a second to decide where things are going. We've got the fuel tech mounted. I just made a bracket that whipped it up right here onto the old stock hold for the steering column it should work out pretty good. And now we just need to figure out how we're gonna route this wiring harness. So currently the factory wiring harness routes all the way from the passenger side. And honestly, I don't really love the way that happens. It goes right over the hot exhaust. It doesn't look very good, although that wiring harness could be cleaned up. It just doesn't look good because it's going through the engine bay. And I'd like this to be as hidden as possible. I do have a small hole over here on the driver's side that is in the firewall already. I think I'm gonna try and utilize that to get the wiring harness for the engine over, down, around, under the brake booster, and then hide all the wires as far back in this engine bay as possible. I don't want the wires to be in your face. I like a clean engine bay, and this is gonna be our chance to clean it up, make it look pretty good. So, I've never really done this before, kind of shooting in the dark. I'm gonna start getting this wiring harness laid out, routed through the firewall, figure out how I'm gonna get it through the cab area and just go from there. When I first bought this harness, I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna need and the options were a 10 foot or a 20 foot. I don't know why on earth I thought I'd need a 20 foot harness, but I ordered the 20 foot harness, which is capable of running an engine in the trunk having the wiring routed to the front bumper and back to the driver's area. Uh, I'd say I went a little overkill on that one, but what are you gonna do about it now? We've got it, it's here. So now I gotta figure out how to stuff 20 feet of harness in, uh, let's see, less than five feet from the front bumper to the steering column, which is where the ECU is mounted. 
I know that some of these wires are going to be routed a little different, but like the furthest wire that I could possibly route would be like the oil pressure sensor down here. What? Up, over, around, through, 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 straight shot, and uh, then I'll only have 15 extra feet of wire. Things have escalated rather quickly. The Corolla got gutted. I took everything out because none of it was hooked up. The AC was never gonna work. The heater box wasn't working. The dash will be going back into it. But I took everything out, remounted all of the current electronics, the aux beam box, the aux beam underglow, the everything that had to do with that. We've got the ignition still going to be controlling, starting this thing, turning it off. Got the fuel tech ready to mount up in here. We've got the wiring somewhat routed. It's a ton of extra wire, less than ideal, but it is what it is. And out here, I went ahead and started cutting up a factory wiring harness I've got. So this was a factory wiring harness for a 3RC. I did not have the ECU for it. I got it on an engine I bought. So I didn't have anything to go with the wiring harness. So I chopped it up, stripped it down, took all the wires I need out of it. And that leaves us with this. Uh, that harness was a two coil, not a four coil harness. So I ordered coil pack plugs online. I probably should have just ordered everything, but I had all this and I wanted to use it. I'm not sure I'm gonna be staying with all of this factory style wiring in the long run. So I am going to be leaving my harness a foot or two too long so that when I do go to rewire this thing, I can rewire it for LS style injectors, a Ford 90 millimeter throttle body, and just other things that I'm gonna need for the long run for this build. But for now, we're getting it running with 100% stock components on the fuel tech. So we've got TPS plug, we've got four coil pack plugs, we've got four injector plugs, we've got cam sensor plug, we've got crank sensor plug, and that's gonna be most everything we need. I'm going to also need a fuel pressure sensor and we're gonna need an intake air temp sensor. Uh, those aren't necessary for it to fire up and run on a base tune, but they're gonna be necessary in the long run. And I'm gonna go ahead and I've got an AEM wideband that is gonna go into the turbo truck and I'm gonna take the fuel tech wideband out of the turbo truck and it's going to go into the Corolla. Fuel tech wideband actually has a CAN bus communication so that it talks to the ECU and it can do on the fly fuel corrections. So in this harness back here, we've got a CAN bus plug that'll plug directly into the fuel tech system and we'll be able to talk the O2 sensor with the computer and that'll just help with tuning, making sure this thing is pretty safe. And also this ECU has fail safes for everything. So we're gonna be setting up a low pressure, a low oil pressure fail safe, low fuel pressure fail safe, uh, high temp fail safe and just everything like that. If this thing sees low oil pressure at all, it's just gonna shut the engine down and save the engine from having any internal damage. As you saw in the last video, this thing doesn't do great with oil pressure all the time. So for now, I'm gonna jump back onto getting this thing wired up. I've got a ton of wiring to do. We're gonna be cutting pretty much all of this out of the harness. Like I said, I don't know why on earth I felt like I needed a 20 foot harness, but I did that. And on my laptop, I've got the entire wiring schematic for this engine. I already went through the ECU set up a few parameters. It knows that this is gonna have sequential spark, semi-sequential injection, and just everything that is going on with this thing. So that's why all these are already labeled. I probably should have cut the harness down before I labeled them, but I labeled these before I spooled the harness out. So I'm gonna get back to wiring this thing, get this thing somewhat close to starting up, and hopefully we can hear this thing fire up on the aftermarket ECU sooner than later. After we get everything wired up, we actually have a four to one collector for a T3 turbo. We've got a 
flange to go onto the engine that's going to give us the possibility to make everything. And we've got a bunch of stainless fittings so we can make ourselves a turbo manifold for this GT3582. So got a lot of work ahead of ourselves. And after days of wiring this thing, trying to make sure everything was looking good, tucked up where it needs to be, out of the way, I also had to order an oil pressure sensor, a fuel pressure sensor, an intake air temp sensor, and a few other things. We've got this thing wired. We've got to clean up a little bit of the wiring. These are the three unused inputs and outputs from the ECU. They're gonna get pulled back into the cab. In the cab, we have a little bit more to clean up, but we've got our aux beam set up with all our lights, that's also gonna be our two-step. We've got our fuse block for everything else and all of it is wired into the key. Turn it on, the key cycles, the ECU turns on and uh, let's see if this thing fires up. I'm excited. I have uh, what I hope to be a good bass tune in this thing, just based on research. Uh, I've already checked for cam and crank sync to make sure that they are communicating with the ECU. So hopefully this thing fires up. And if not, I'm going to have to learn how to tune. So I've got my laptop in here to try and figure things out. So I might not be a great tuner, but I'll bet I can get it started running and hopefully idling and decent-ish. Uh, it fuel tech's really user-friendly and has a bunch of help with base maps. So... Oh my goodness. Let's see. Got fuel pressure. Let's see. Where is where is my diagnostics? Okay, here we go. 48 psi of fuel pressure. It's building oil pressure idling. All right. Those are all good things. TPS is reading, intake air temps reading. All right. Ah, this thing's kind of running like garbage. Let's see, uh, RPM signal. 120 degrees has it idling kind of like crap. Let's try 100 degrees. know if that's better or worse I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to tuning so it might take me a while to find everything proper I'm probably gonna have to go get a timing light I don't own a timing light so that's fun <laughs> I don't know if that was bad timing or if that was two-step because it thinks two steps enabled <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna learn how to tune for a while all right we've been playing with the tune for a while trying to get this thing to run and idle decent and I think we're there I uh, need to get a timing light on this thing to know for sure if the timing is where it needs to be but I think we got it pretty close and uh, it sounds a lot better than it did let's see Got it idling and revving. We've got all our temps and gauges working. Learning as I go, but I'm super stoked that we're actually getting something done. And we've got the fuel tech. over revved it I guess I need to put in a harsher rev limiter what did I rev it to oh 61.35 so uh, 
Stock rev limiter on these engines is 5750, so revving it to 6150 is pretty high. Uh, I'm not super worried with what we've got going on. This is a 2RZ, not a 3RZ, less stroke, no balance shaft, so it should be good to go. But uh, it revs good, and uh, I think we're getting somewhere. Next thing I need to do is get the uh, wideband installed, but I don't know if I'm going to install the wideband until I completely remake this exhaust with the turbo kit. So, we're getting somewhere. We completely wired a fuel tech ECU into the Corolla, and uh, I'm feeling pretty accomplished about that. Now that we've got this thing running, it's going to need a bunch of tune work. I'm probably going to end up taking it someone to tune it, but I might not do that till after we get the turbo kit fabbed up. But for now, I'm going to finish cleaning up all this wiring we've got going on, because out of the back of the ECU is just a bundle of wires. So I'm going to get all of this wrapped up. I'm going to get everything loomed in the cab, everything loomed in the engine bay, and get this as tidied up and clean as possible. That way it's just done, looks good, and is ready for abuse. So that's my next task is to take this thing all apart, take this wiring harness all apart, and loom the entire thing. I'm going to be using loom tape. It's uh, actually my new favorite kind of loom. It's like factory Volkswagen style. It works really well, this tape works really well, and I'm enjoying using it. It's a lot better than the split loom I've used in the past. Um, I know there's better options out there in terms of like fireproof, fireproof loom and stuff like that, but this stuff's worked really well for me. It's what I've had on the engine and all the wiring that I did in this thing prior, haven't had any issues, and I've been using it on other builds like the Hilux. So, stoked about this stuff, and I'm gonna go ahead and use probably like three or four rolls of it to get this entire harness wrapped up and looking good. All right, we got things loomed. We got the whole engine harness wrapped. The only thing that's left is the intake air temp sensor, and that's just because I haven't actually fabbed up an intake for this thing. The throttle body came off so we could get all that loomed up, and I wanted to have it pretty well in place when I loomed it up. We've got an oil pressure sensor, a fuel pressure sensor. All of the sensors for the engine are nice, tucked away, loomed. You're not gonna be able to see much wiring for this thing. This entire wiring harness is going to come off and I'm actually going to route it under the brake booster and brake master cylinder so it's not sitting on top of the engine. And honestly, I think the wire tuck on this thing turned out pretty good. And then on the inside, man, there was a ton of work to get the inside of this thing looking halfway decent. You can see that there's still a ton of wires going on up there, but they're all loomed, they're all tucked away. And honestly, there's just a ton of wires in this car. We've got the whole engine management system. That's also the entire chassis wiring for headlights, taillights, and turn signals. And I think it's decent. I've never wired a full car before, and this is the first time, and I think we did okay. So now all we've got left to do is get a tune on this thing, but we turn the key, the factory key, in the factory column, and we get the fuel tech turning on, and you got the key to start it, that's one of my favorite things. Yeah, race cars are cool. Starting something with a button is cool, but man, it just gives me this awesome satisfaction to sit in a car, turn the key, and have it fire up. So I think that's it for tonight. That might be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and I really hope to catch you on the next one.